on the beautiful map Ports of Eisen, the most played map, but luckily not a map, I mean not a single map can be played on twice in a series. And remember, each player has the chance to dodge one single time. So basically, Falcon but also his opponent Ghost, if they don't like a specific matchup, they will get the chance to dodge one time each, but only one time each. We have the red Goblin player Falcon on the right side, against the green Engma player Ghost on the left side. He's from Ukraine, not Ukraine, UK, sorry. <laughs> and we have the red Goblin player from Turkey. Valindru, welcome. Bets are open, guys, for the upcoming game or for this game, rather. You can now use your channel points to bet. Two tunnels into the Goblin cave, into the third tunnel defensively coming up for the Goblin player. On the other side, we see two mills, Hall of the Kingsman, into the third mill coming up for the Engma player Ghost. Okay, so what is the plan? I believe early on it's going to be a little bit about spam spamming units like Goblin Warriors eventually for the Goblin player, Gundabad Warriors eventually for the Engma player, but later on we might also see some Spiderlings, Spider Riders, Half Troll Swordsmen. I, I believe that also Karch, the hero of Engma, might be actually quite useful in this matchup against Goblins because of the passive of the Chill Soul. So basically he will be able to deal damage over time to nearby enemy units. We have the mill number 4 coming up now for the Engma player on the left side. So, Goblin Keef into the second Goblin Keef. Like, you know, predicted, we will see eventually 2, 3, 4 Goblin Keefs in total. They are quite useful early on. Unlike the other units, they are also really, really fast. And they are also having the potential to kill the Gundabad Warrior, by the way, by themselves. It's definitely possible with the Poison Bleeds. If you can snipe down the Drama Master, you can one-shot him and you will be in a very good spot. And the players need to play only one match with yes true yeah you only play one series so basically best of three so there is not best of three now and then best of three later on because we are playing all the games on neutral host and for that reason there is going to be only one match between each player and the top two players are able to advance to the next round which is going to be the round of 16. war is going to be used on his gonna bad warriors that means the tunnel is going to be taken down or oh i think it's going to go down trauma is in a safe spot it's gonna be close, 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 close. Or oh, really close. Really close. Like one more second and he would have been able to save this. But it's not the end of the world, I guess. Because Warchan has been blown away. It means now the Goblin player will have his own Warchan advantage, right? And he might make some stuff happen. That is the push also from the Goblin player. But the tunnel is gonna be found immediately by Ghost. He will be also able to take it down right off the bat. Um, for me personally, I mean not personally, but also that's proven statistics from the previous tournaments, Avi is definitely the best Turkish player in Rise of Twitch King. And also I believe in BFME too. Okay, the Gundabites are coming now. There is there are two tunnels inside the jeans. And two fans 1907, my man, for three months already, bro. Thank you so much for the huge spot. You are crazy, my friend. For all the gifted subs, for Team the bits. Fans 1907 just resubscribed for three months. Ahoy. Holy moly. Holy moly, indeed, my friend. Holy moly to you. Thank you so much for the huge support. The mill is going to be found and taken down, but Engma is putting lots of pressure on the goblin player, right? He's able to successfully kill multiple tunnels. The way the tunnels are working, and that's very unique to the goblin faction, they are leaving a rubble behind. So basically, the rubble... Is going to be able to rebuild itself over time and another five gifted subs two fans thank you so much for the huge spot <laughs> but hold on a second two fans 1907 just gifted five subs what a pirate thank you thank you by the way guys if you are trying to sub to the channel or gift subs please don't do that today wait until tomorrow because starting from tomorrow every donation every sub every bit is going to be donated to the charity to help people in ukraine so guys you have done enough for me trust me there are much more people around the world who are in a, in a much worse spot and let's try to help them out instead you know so please don't do that now don't do anything just follow the channel and if you are trying to uh, support the channel you can do that tomorrow by supporting the charity okay S starting from tomorrow until the end of this tournament uh, the mill is going to be eventually taken down it's going to be close 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 can he do it Ah, uh, no. He's going to be able to save that. 450 command points available for goblins and 500 command points available for Engmar. And <laughs> gifted stuff from two fans to Zephy. <laughs> Thank you so much. T 
2 Funs 1907 gifted Zephyrin a subscription. What a monster. 2 Funs 1907 gifted a tier 1 sub to Zephyrin. They have given 140 gift subs in the channel. 140 gift subs to the channel, guys. 140 gift subs to the channel. What is going on? Thank you so much. Uh, the money on the ground. Um, who's gonna hit like a track? Dude, everybody has the chance to hit like a track, my dude. Uh, just came and missed the part of charity. No problem. So basically, you know, the situation in Ukraine with Russia and the, you know, the world is not in a, in a peaceful spot as we are talking. And there is over a million refugees from Ukraine fleeing and getting away from the country in other places. So basically, they are forced to start from zero. Innocent people are getting harmed. And that's why I was deciding yesterday and also today actually was thinking about it, how we can manage that. Uh, starting tomorrow or in the next live stream, we will have until the end of the tournament a charity stream. So every donation, sub, bit will be collected during this period of time, which might be three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, depends on how long the tournament is going to go for. And everything is going to be donated directly to the, to the charity to help people, the children, but also the women in the war. So they are hopefully going to have a little bit easier time. If you want to change something, you got to be the same. You got to be the change. That's not going to be a huge impact, but it's better than nothing. And hopefully this way the BFME community and you and me, we will be able to spot them a little bit. I'm looking forward for that. That's a huge push of the Engma player, by the way. He has Watch and Ability available. And he has 9 power points in the bank. So a little bit more than 1 power point away from getting the additional summon. Imagine you summon additionally those orcs from the Spellbook of Engma and Watch them all together. But he was Watch hunting already in the middle of the map. I speak I with the Witch King's voice. Oh boy, I'm a sub. Yes, my yes sir, you are a sub. I think you got a gifted sub also from uh, 2 fans 1907. Okay, Engma is able to defend this and also putting it pressure at the same time. And now he has the Orc summon available from the Spellbook. Goblins are falling really behind. He has barely any units around. And this might be the one push to win this game. I mean, he has 525 command points, but he has no money, right? To recruit uh, to recruit multiple half thrust Wartmen, that's the tricky part about them because they are so expensive. And no problem, dude, I got you. Uh, GG's gonna be called from Falcon, and that's gonna be the first game. What a dominant performance from Ghost from U UK. We have the right Isengard player Falcon at the bottom right side for Isengasm. He's fighting and facing against the green Man of the West player Ghost, also using a different nickname in this game, at the top left side of the map. Uh, yes, sir. I will definitely. I will also, you know, when I'm going to go live with the charity stream for the first time, I'm also going to tag everybody. You guys know I am not using everybody tagging in Discord frequently, not even when I'm going live. But I think it's an important event. And also the chance, I, I think everybody deserves the chance to let, you know, to know about it. And if they can afford it, if they can, if they are willing to support, they are definitely able to support starting in the next live stream. Uh, early barracks coming up for the Man of the West play after the first farm into the second farm. On the other side, we see Furnace, Furnace, Uruk Pit into the third Furnace coming up for the Isengard player Falcon. Uh, hey Mustafa, welcome. Mustafa, you can play next. So basically, Ghost said he has time, so he can also play against you after the games between him and Falcon. The Urukai shall rise from the Uruk Pit. And we have the Gonda Soldiers. What is the plan? So early on, I think it's going to be kind of about spamming. So basically, the Man of the West faction in the version 8.5 became more or less like a spammy faction nowadays. So you can spam soldiers of Gondor all the time. Of course, Uruks are stronger than soldiers. That's not about it. But Uruks, they are also much more expensive, right? So you cannot have the same amount of Uruks, unlike your soldier, unlike the soldiers from the opening player. And if Ghost is playing a good macro game, he can use multiple pathways to pressure the Isengard player from every single different pathway. And he might even build about second barracks, but also you can obviously go for a transition into the stable for the Gondonites. So, you know, when you want to go for Kev, I think Man of the West faction is your faction because Gondonites are quite reliable and they get easy support from Elma, for example. 
Gondor soldiers are leading forward. There is one more coming from the bottom side. The furnace has zero protection on it, but crossbowmen are just joining the battlefield as we are talking. The wallop is coming up for Falcon. He wanna try to defend this furnace. And one more soldier is coming from the top, from the middle. There is one Urukai who was able to sneak through. The stable is coming up indeed for Ghost now. But the farm is going to be definitely bursted down. War chant was not even necessary in my opinion. But it's not the end of the world. Now the man of the West play has the war chant advantage. And he will be able to clump against this furnace eventually. That's not a very good uh, build style I believe from Falcon. Because Ghost should be able to get in between this right? I think he should be able to get in between. Or never mind. Looks like he cannot. The build up. And also the second farm is going down for the Man of the West player. The Furnace is under attack. We get now more crossbow men up on the field. You want to keep your distance, so you don't want to be in melee range against the soldiers. This one is going to be defended quite nicely. The clan setting is coming up for Isengard 2 for the Weapon of Thailand. Warchant or Riding Cold Rider has been used defensively. Those Uruks, they are level 2 now. And fighting against uh, soldiers is going to just be a waste of time. Because Gondonites are now on the field to clean you up. But the good thing about this situation for Falcon is he will be able to see the Gondonites now being used defensively. It means he's going to have the time to recruit some counter units. In this case, the Uruk Pikemen. Hey Max, and here also forevermore. The farm is going to be defended. That's good. Pretty nice. Not bad at all. So we have 350 command points in the bank for the Man of the West and 450 command points for Falcon, the Isengard player. He was actually having a good early game. He was able to keep those furnaces protected. That's pretty awesome. But he need to now recruit multiple pikemen to deal with the enemy Gondonites. And he went also for too many crossbow men for my personal taste. Like three of them are a little bit overkill. Maybe some Uruks instead would be a better mix, but we shall see about that. Uruks are just so tanky, you know what I'm saying? They are even good against Gondonites. So you have a strong front line to keep the soldiers away because soldiers are going to counter your pikemen. And Weapon of Thailand, they are no match. The Furnace is under attack. What you can do is use Bombard to shoot over the Furnace. He's going to do that. Watch this. That's the Bombard ability. It's a little bit too late, but he will still be able to deal some damage. Oh, the Gondor Knights are coming. Dude, move, move. <laughs> oh, that's going to be too late. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. Trample. Oh, beautiful trample is incoming. One trample to rule them all. They might be even able to take down the furnace. The pikemen, what is... Oh, no, 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 no. They are like... The desperate charge with Faramir. You know, when they were charging to Osgiliath, that's exactly what happened. They were running so smoothly. <laughs> it, like, it was like planned, you know what I'm saying? To run directly into the pikemen. Okay, that is going to be the counter-attack. Warchan is almost back up. Archer range is coming up for Ghost now. He's building all the production buildings next to each other to protect this farm. But this Uruk Pikeman, Crossbowman, and Viper of Thailand might do something happen. All you gotta do is keep those Crossbowman protected against Gunner Knights. But, oh, the Builder, not the Builder. Okay, the Builder has been taken down. The Gunner Knights, dude, imagine you are camping right on the spot and they are running right into the Pikeman the second they enter the battlefield. That would be kind of, kind of crazy. Farm, the torches though, the torches. Okay, nice torches, but don't lose them because of one single farm. The trample is incoming, fortune is gonna be used. The Gunner Knights are taking some damage, but they actually got a decent damage off. The soldiers are taking care of the pikemen. Rolling Cole is gonna be used on this army defensively from Goose. The Gunner Knights are so badly damaged, but the pikes are almost gone. One more trample, Kribin is gonna be used. Now the Gunner Knights have the debuff. They are getting slowed down, but the soldiers now they are cleaning up. The Gunner Knight is gonna be able to get in safety. That means with the well, he will be able, you know, he will be able to recover to full battalion once again. And that was a great fight for Man of the West, in my opinion, because he was able to win the fight, even though Isengard was committing fully with torches, with Warchan, and also with the Kribin. But the only good thing about the situation for Falcon is he is now having a decent amount of time to kind of expand, right? He has 500 command points in the bank. He needs to get some more Uruks. That's what I was trying to say. Imagine a Uruk battalion right in the middle of this army would be so much harder for Ghost to defend. That is the creep. Going down. Kribin should be moving around a little bit to see what's going on. The well is coming up for the Man of the West player. One Gondor Knight is moving to the bottom right side. We'll be able to find the furnace and take it down. Oh, look at this. One single crossbow man, you know. <laughs> Get away with him. Get away. Look, he's responding slowly. He's like, I'm alone. You are not alone. 
The band I carry out. <laughs> All right, Isengard creeping. The money on the ground. Hey, Falcon, don't do that, man. Don't leave money on the ground. And he doesn't like Uruks, by the way. He doesn't like Uruks. I don't know why not. Crossbowmen are great, but I think Uruks, like the melee strength of the Isengard, Uruks, and Pikeman combination is also pretty strong. I don't think that you can rely on the crossbowmen too much. But I might be wrong. Um, Caustic, E8. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Hope you're going to enjoy your stay. Six power all points in the bank after the war and creeping. 600 command points available for Isengard. 450 only for Ghost. He has four power all points collected after the rallying call in the heal. So, what is the plan? Archer range level 1, Barracks level 1, into stable level 1. We have not a single hero on the field as we are talking. There is no Elma, there is no Tyrion, there is no Faramir or Boromir for men, and there is no Lourdes or Sharku or even the Wormtongue, the best hero in the game for Isengard. So, there is the push incoming. Oh, oh! Actually, he has only always one pikeman, and the one pikeman is, for whatever reason, always so badly damaged. And he is doing the mistake over and over again. This push is a waste of money. The Uruks and pikeman, they are so expensive, they cost 400 each, guys. 400 plus 350 for the crossbow man, and then you have one pikeman out of Dunlands. So, you pay around about a thousand resources, and you are able to deal zero damage. Like, that's the worst case scenario, I'm telling you. Five power points collected. Ten is going to give you the chance to go for the Tom Bombadil special summon, for example. You can go for the Lone Tower special summon if you want to. Um, which can be quite defensively. With the Archer range level 2, with the ranges, you can put them inside. You should be in a good spot. One more attack is happening. They have no torches. But they still... Oh, that's a level 2 farm. Go for Rebuild, maybe. Can you save that with Rebuild? I don't think so. That means minus 75 command points and the Man of the West player is now command points kept. There is one soldier coming. The level 2 furnace is going to be his target. There is also one Gondorite coming for pressuring. So, Man of the West player will be losing yet another farm eventually. This farm is going to get blown up because Weapon of the Island, they have such a crazy DPS. But they're also very squishy. That's why they are getting literally one-shotted. The furnace, level 2, is going to be protected. It's good. But this furnace is going down. So, Man of the West player cannot recruit any more units as for now because he has not enough command points to do that. Which gives you kind of the chance, unwillingly, to save up for heroes. Right, because you can't recruit any units. So by the time you can finally recruit units again from your command points, you can actually maybe go for a, for a hero. Like Boromir could be a nice hero. Um, Elma can be a very great hero to support those Gondonites. Warpit level 1. He needs to get it to level 2 to be able to recruit the Warp Riders. I think the Warp Packs are not going to have enough impact in the mid to lead game. It's an early game unit. They are falling off big time in mid leads. The creep is going to be secured by Isengard. How many power points does he have? Three power points after the devastation. He has 725 command points in the bank. So Falcon actually in this game number two is doing a phenomenal job against Ghost. He's also expanding quite nicely at the bottom left side. Look at that. One, two, three, four furnaces in total to get in total 200 command points alone from this area. Sakura not in the map pool? Oh, really? <laughs> Dude, I'm... My bad, I didn't actually take a look into that. My, Andy Brandy is like the, the lawyer, you know what I'm saying? Imagine being arrested for protesting against war, WTF. I got you, bro. I, I feel you. The farm level 2 is going down. Lourdes is on the field, the fighting Urukai. The farms are going down one by one and actually Ghost is falling apart. The only good thing about this situation is he has now an archer range level 2. The bad situation is he cannot recruit any of these ranges because he has not available command points. But he has nearly 10 power points in the bank, which might be used into something like a lone tower. And then you can place the lone tower maybe right here on the spot, maybe even here, because it will protect the barracks, the archer range, and the stable, and the almost level 3 farm at the same time. Okay, the builder might be in trouble. Should be able to get away. That's a, that's going to be a big fight eventually. But looks like Isengard doesn't want to take this fight. He has no pikemen. Imagine one Warg Rider coming. And he's going to camp, boys. Looks like meets back on the Wargs. Boys, let's go. For the second Urukpit. I think it's a little bit too much. Maybe go for the Extrovers instead. Maybe go for another hero like Sharku. I think Sharku could be a nice hero in this situation. Because Man of the West player has zero pikemen upon the field. And even if he goes for the Rohan Spearman, they are kind of meh. They are not very strong, even though they got buffed in the version 8.5. I, I still feel like they are not very good. 
Glory for Ukraine. Hey, man. Mr. Bap Baptist. Welcome to the stream, my dude. All right. The fights here between War Packs or War Riders, rather, in the Gundam Knights. The Gundam Knights should be able to win this fight because they are not using the whole ability for whatever reason. Oh! Bombadillo! Where is the Bombadillo? Oh, here's the, here's the Bombadillo. Go for it. Oh, he, he missed the Sonic Song. I think he missed it. Uh, because I don't see any corpses. He had he killed only two units or something. It's reloading, though. I believe in total you will get the chance to use it. When you use it right off the bat, you can use Sonic Song from this dude like three times. Maybe only two. I mean, 200 person two, but maybe even three times. Lourdes is level one only. I'm actually curious, guys. Does anybody know of you guys in the chat? Can you cripple the Tom Bombadil? You know, can you stop him with Lords? Is it possible? Seven power points collected. No? Okay. Mustafa knows. So he says he says no. And when he says no, then he's right. A man is recovering a little bit. 550 command points in the bank. Isengard has 775, but he could have more, I believe, right? He could have more. But he's not expanding as much as he could around this area. The mid side, there is nothing happening. Maybe some battle towers. Sounds maybe lame, but I think they could be definitely impactful in a situation like that. Nine power points collected after the devastation. Fifteen will give you the chance to go for the fuel the fires, which means even greater amount of resource income. But you can just funnel in into something like a Saruman, for example, right? And on this beautiful map, you have plenty of beautiful trees and you can harvest them all. 11 power points collected and 9 power points collected after the Tom Bombadil. Tom Bombadil is like a very situational summon. It's like a really long cooldown too. So it won't be up for the next fight anytime soon. And maybe the Lone Tower could have been a bit more impactful. Because there are like three pathways on this map, right? So basically take a look into this map. You have a pathway in the, mid in the bot side, middle and top side. And I believe one Lone Tower can actually give you lots of vision control around this area and block this area quite nicely. I think Lone Towers on a map like Sakura Forest could be quite impactful. Level 3, Whiteman of Dunn and Special Summon will be used now. Warchan is coming in clutch. Lords is level 3, level 5 is gonna unlock his leadership. Remember, Man of the West faction is one of the, on the only faction in the game, actually, that has no debuff. Arrow Volley is gonna be chosen from the spellbook and will be casted right off the bat on the army of Falcon. Falcon is not paying attention and his Whiteman of Dunn army is gonna be crushed. Just like that. He might still be able to take down the Archer range. We have no rebuild ability available for man. He was just investing all his power points for the Arrow Volley. Arrow Volley and Tom Bombadil, they are also very situational because normally you will see the animation coming from the Arrow Volley and you have the time to move aside, to step aside. But I think Falcon wasn't focusing on this battle. That's why he won't be able to deal any more damage. Lourdes might be even in trouble. He's staying on fire like a boss and burning slowly but surely over time. He's only level 3, he needs to be level 4 or level 5 rather to be very strong. The farm is going down. Man losing a lot of his units. He lost the entire army by the way. And if he loses the level 3 farm, that's going to be quite painful. So basically he has money, as you can see. He has around about 2000 in the bank. He's going to call it GG though. And what a great performance from Isengard. Very well played and the score is going to be even. After the second game, we're going to jump into the tiebreaker into the deciding game right now 50 minutes and 30 seconds gg well played okay so let's do this one one Mustafa stream sniping. <laughs> uh, you should use the zoom out to out of the map more often. Looks useful to see the moves and they are in the battle to focus on. Do I, I think I'm zooming out already quite a lot, <laughs> but you know, uh, sometimes I want to also be able. That's what I like. Dwarves against Isengard. The matchup for the game number three. We have the green dwarven player goes at the top side against the red Isengard player Falcon at the bottom side. I mean, that's an interesting matchup. I believe that's a not bad, that's not a bad matchup for dwarves at all. I think that's a good map for dwarves on the map jungles of Fararat. You have plenty of options. You can go for like a sneaky attack, close the gap with the mineshafts. That's very important. If you cannot use those mineshaft connection system nicely, you will definitely end up losing this game because when it comes to Volk from one location to the other location, it's just going to take you ages to reach the opposite side. 
Chengs just saw your 4v4 match with me. Seemed like your teammate did nothing. Dude, he was around. <laughs> he was existing in the game. That's all that matters. More 4v4 action. Yeah, 4v4 was actually quite fun. Surprisingly fun. I normally don't enjoy 4v4 matches that much, but the one we have played in Battle for Middle Earth 1 a couple of days ago was pretty fun. Two, three mine shafts into the Hall of Warriors, into the Pikemen. We have a War Pit opening for Isengard. So Pikemen, that means he's going to creep. Potentially the troll layer here, or the troll layer even here at the bottom left corner. And the tournament should be a random only choice. Yes, sir. And Caustic EA, thanks for the first time subbing to the channel, my dude. Thank you guys so much for the support. But, guys, quick reminder once again. Caustic EA just subscribed. Welcome to Beyond Standards Crew. Welcome to Beyond Standards Crew. Thank you so much for the huge support. You followed like a half an hour ago. And now you sub to the channel. What a gentle, what a generous person you are. Thank you so much. By the way, guys, again, don't sub or cheer bits today. Please don't. Because starting from tomorrow, we will have a charity event. And if you, you know, choose to support me with a sub, which costs you around about five bucks, don't do that. Give the five bucks tomorrow to the children in uh, need, to the innocent people of Ukraine. We will make a, a, you know, charity stream, not only tomorrow, but until the end of the tournament. And everything is going to go towards the people in war in Ukraine to support them out a little bit. Uh, I mean, whatever this costs actually in your country, right? When it's when it's gonna cost you two euro, two dollars is also fine. I think it's better to support them because I, I personally, I do it. The amount of gifted subs and everything to this channel in the past weeks made me really proud. Thank you guys so much, but I don't need it as much as those guys need. Have you ever thought about being a professional announcer? I am a pro professional announcer in Battle for Middle Earth. <laughs> I'm not gonna cheat on BFME. Why hasn't WW3 started yet? I mean, are you upset about it? I, I am hoping that it's not gonna happen. I think we are humans and we can solve our problems by just talking. But the thing is, it's all about ego, right? Most of the time. And it's very unfortunate because always the innocent people are getting harmed the most. Like the presidents, they're always fine. You know what I'm saying? It's the soldiers and the innocent people. Creeping action, the mineshaft. Oh, who's gonna get the creep? I wanna see that. I wanna see that. Dancing around to Rosie. He's stalling. He's buying time. Okay, he needs to be... Oh, he's taking so much damage. Money, 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 money. Oh, okay. He gave up the money. And dwarves are getting all the money. That's very good. And he will lose the war. That's the worst case scenario for Falcon, actually. Because a war between two countries does, I mean, it will. Like, did you guys know? I mean, did you guys hear the news from today? So basically, they were actually shooting. Oh, what is this, dude? Like, he was almost, they were almost entering the next map. They were shooting a, a, a atomic reactor today. And this, this stuff, guys, I'm telling you, can be messed up for the entire world. And not only for the two nations. We are living in a, in a, in a small world. And everything what happens in the world doesn't only affect those two countries, but also every country around it. 650 command points with wars and 450 for Isengard. The rallying call is not available. He was using it on this push, by the way. War, pet, war packs only. No war pit level 2 yet. And there is another push. So he's sandwiching Isengard now from both the locations. Hi Shanks and all of you, I'm primarily a YouTube watcher but want to see you live and sport you, thank you so much dude. I mean you being in the stream and you following the channel is already a huge sport and constantly appreciate that, it really means a lot to me. And if you are coming from the main YouTube channel, uh, that, I mean you might figure out the you know, differential between the Twitch and YouTube because in, in YouTube and the main channel we are trying to make it more give me one beast and in rise of the witch king we are trying to cover the events and tournaments for bfme 2 and rise of the witch king so because i want to actually showcase all battle for middle earth games and i like them all so basically that's what i'm trying to make the bfme the main youtube channel for bfme 1 only 
in the second YouTube channel in Twitch for Beef Me 2 and Rise of Twitch King. GG, yeah, that's a very good push. That's a very good push. Smoke is right. A lot of damage dealt. Look at this layout. We have a mineshaft here, mineshaft here. He's pressuring a lot from every single location, which is pretty awesome. How long has he been streaming? I'm streaming now for an hour. Around about an hour. Okay, so Hall of Warriors, two of them. No Forge Works yet for a battle wagon action. Creeping at the same time. The Uruks. The problem is he doesn't scout. And I think in this matchup it's important to use the to invest 500 for the Kribin upgrade on the Fortress. It will grant you such a great and amazing vision control that you can find all these sneaky mineshafts around this area. And you might you, you need to take them down. You have to take them down, to be precise. He's creeping. He's also creeping this one, but the money got secured by Isengard this time. That's pretty good for Halcon. He needed that. The problem with Isengard's eco is, if you cannot have a great early game, you will struggle a lot in mid to late game because your units are so expensive, right? They cost a lot. Look, he's down to 450, he has barely any money, and each Urukai, each Uruk pikeman costs you 400 each. Not even talking about the war packs or the clan setting coming up now. So it's gonna be really hard for Isengard to maintain those three production buildings with this low eco. He needs devastation as soon as possible. But he's still over 3 power points away from this point. And I'm actually curious why dwarves are not using this location to go for a massive attack. But it looks like you wanna... Ah, that's, oh, that's actually not bad. He will be now able to find 1, 2, 3 furnaces and take them down one by one. I like all beef me content to be honest yeah I, personally i enjoy all uh, when it comes to play the game i enjoy beef me one the most because that's the game i've been playing many many years myself but i like to you know we had like before this event we had like a beef me tournament it's also pretty fun and the idea behind this is to get all beef me players connect with each other look at the you know upcoming or look at the spring tournament now we have so many people now moving from beef me to and participating in the rise of twitch king event that's so awesome. Like originally, Abe Habe also was a BFME 2 player only. He moved to Rise of the Witch King because of the event. Sauron is the same. Um, and also, for example, Ectilion is the same. We have also now Inumara. We have so many people. My dream is to have one big BFME community and not this separation between BFME 1, 2 and Rise of the Witch King, all of them together because we are such a small group of people separating us is just not good, you know? Okay, that's a good fight for Dwarves, 10 power points collected. He might go for the Devastation now, but <laughs> he's down to 350 command points versus 1000. Dude, that's such a massive lead and Falcon doesn't say a single word and he's gonna leave the game right off the bat and that's gonna be a 2-1 victory for Ghost from UK.